All right, what an exciting week it's been, huh? So this week, in the wake of all the supply chain, global shortages, shipping issues, we have two new vehicles right before the holidays, the Axial SCX6, which made huge waves because of its size. And now we have, just yesterday, the Vanquish VS410 Phoenix Portal making shock waves as well. But the biggest news about it is its price. All right, I hope you're intrigued. The price is amazing, but there's a lot more to the story, and I'm gonna dig in in this unboxing video of this exciting new vehicle. So, I had the original Vanquish, the Vanquish VS410 Origin, which came before this. That one was $900. And I put a review here. I wasn't an expert, but I was honest, and I wasn't that impressed for 900 bucks. Um, but luckily, they've listened to a lot of uh, my feedback and the user's feedback and they've developed a few new kits. So they came out with the second iteration is the Vanquish VS410 Pro for $825. And they really improved a lot of the issues that existed in, in the original one. I think, I always feel you gotta, you gotta make baby steps first, uh, especially if, you're, if it's a new category you're competing in before you become a pro or, or, or swing for the fences. And then they follow this up with a portal axle version called the Pro Ultra for $900. So here it is. Why is it making waves? I mentioned the price, $500. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. When me and my buddy saw it in the morning, we're all like, it's at 500. And we said, okay, that's a, that's, that's a pricing error. We looked at the basic specs, that's a pricing error. That's got to be 700, 900. Let's buy it before they change their mind. <laughs> so luckily, it's not just about price, right? You know, a lot of cheap kits out there. So if this was a thousand, people would still buy it because they have some really innovative uh, engineering features in it. And the most significant of which is called the VFD twin. VFD is their transmission. And what they've done with it is they added integrated two things in it. One is a selectable overdrive. Overdrive is when your front wheel spins faster than your rear, and that allows you to, to climb over stuff, uh, make your steering radius tighter. Really good tool for beating your friends or for, uh, for competition. And what they did, but is it has a compromise. When, you're, when your front wheel is spinning much faster than your rear, you wear out your drivetrain, you are not that stable on the side hilling uh, when you're trailing, when you're, when, you're, when you're hiking five miles with your vehicle. It, it, uh, it doesn't work as well because they're not, they're not in sync. So what they did, they said, okay, we'll give you 6% overdrive and 33% overdrive, switchable by a switch on your transmitter. So you need a channel for that and a servo. The other thing they put in this VFD twin is a dig unit. A dig unit locks your rear wheels while your front is spinning and allows you to pivot on a dime. And it allows you to position your vehicle uh, in, in, a, in very tight situations uh, without doing all your three point, five point turns and whatnot. It not only is useful in tight turns, it's useful during climbs. You know, it gives you more, more of a dynamic motion, which usually allows you to change things up and get over stuff. After I unbox it, I'm gonna go through pros and cons of this vehicle. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. So the third thing they have is they have a really cool body. It's not a Jeep. Yes. Not that Jeeps are bad, there's just so many of them. It looks like a Toyota FJ47 pickup uh, Land Cruiser, old, old school. And it is, has no body, body posts sticking out of here. And it's on a swivel mount. And it's got the good swivel mount, means it's, it swivels from the front. So it goes like that. Uh, and why is that cool? Because it's, it's a little easy, it's more stable, uh, easier to operate, and 
allows you to work on your on your, on your basic stuff when you swivel it up. And it's easy to take the whole body off as well with a little dowel system that they have. So very cool body, very configurable. You could you could run it half cab if if you want. Uh, it's got a little cage. All right, next thing they have, as you can tell from the name, Phoenix Portal is portal axles. Portal axles uh, is an advantage when you're, it's very obstacle strewn because you have more ground clearance. Because they put portal here, uh, they're probably gonna have a new version called straight. <laughs> but they came out with portal first, you know, attacking the market, responding to the market with what's competitive out there but they will give the user options, so that's cool. And one thing they do, they understand what's going on here. Portal axles lift your shock mounts because the, the, the shocks mount on the axle and it elevates the whole chassis. So what they do for that is they give you shorter shocks, 80 millimeter shocks instead of 90 uh, to get your center gravity down. So real good understanding of the physics dynamics of a crawler. So I hear the other few things is I hear they improve the shocks, they're a little bit bigger and the, the last thing is they're using plastic axles. So plastic axles is one of those things, the trade-offs that they did to save money. I think the old axles were like 450 bucks up here <laughs> just for the axles. So to do plastic uh, made overseas, uh, you save money, but really, really, uh, you, you lower the weight of the vehicle. Of, this is gonna be a heavy vehicle and more important, did you know that plastic performs better than brushed aluminum? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I've tested it. You know it, you guys, you guys know it. I, you know, a lot of people don't wanna admit it because they spend so much money on the metal axles, but metal, especially the brushed aluminum, is soft and it just drags on rock. Uh, plastic slides better, right? And after 20 battery packs, it kinda looks the same. You know, it, it doesn't look all scratched up. So now we're gonna move on to the Next part of this video, we're gonna unbox. I've never seen this before. So these are their tires, their beadlock wheels. Let's check it out. Are they beadlocks? Yep. And their foam, uh, single stage foam. I'm not sure, hopefully they change the formulation of the rubber a little bit. This has got a good tread pattern. So if this works out, um, I'll, be, I'll be pumped. Uh, ready, I can feel it's a little bit, little bit gummy. Um, smells like good rubber. You could, you could usually, detect that and it's got a nice wheel so these are your they're not mounted yet so I have to mount them five screws I believe okay what is in here oh so this is always cool so you have your your hub covers and you have your uh, offset um, configurable offset on the wheels. So you could make them fairly flush or stick way out. So here is your body. So, oh, an interior. Really cool that it's an interior. And pretty cool that it's all uh, lightweight stuff, you know? Some interiors are too heavy. You have your, your fenders, but they're small. So optimized for, for wheeling, you have a 3D mold plastic molded piece right here. You could run just with a half cab or with the, with a cage in the back. So this is your, what looks to be your, your cage. So this add, will add a little bit of weight to the vehicle, cage and Steering wheel, interior, do I see white person there? So here are your fans. Okay, and this is pretty cool. Uh, in, the, in my 410 Pro, I complained a little bit that the, the wheel wells were made out of Lexan, not very realistic. Um, and these are molded pieces and they're not heavy. They're not like Red Cat molded pieces. So they were able to spend the money, get the quality product, but not add a lot of weight. Oh, this is pretty cool. This is, uh, oh, this is heavy. 
This is a molded piece for a radiator. These are your bumpers and they're super neat because they're so small. If you look at a Jeep bumper, they don't, they don't cover your wheels. They don't, they're not really meant to protect a big, the big body or, or survive a, a big freeway impact. They're meant to just, just hit the rock and get out of the way. So these are tiny bumpers, got a winch, fair lead uh, room there. This is your rear bumper, so tiny because bumpers just get in the way. And these are super cool. These are your sliders. So the sliders seem like they're part of the chassis. Wider becomes narrower. So it allows you to pivot around the rocks. All right, these are your battery trays or your receiver trays, your battery tray, big battery. Although, ooh, probably need a big battery since you have all those servos. All right, these are your uh, fenders for your rear. These are your center pieces, some of your bottom pieces. And this is the highest quality plastic you can have. So one of the issues with the old Vanquish is it had a lot of chassis flex. And what they did was they uh, reinforced it head to toe, uh, braced it with these molded pieces highest quality plastic slides good a lot of nylon content so this is their their chassis c ladder chassis oh separate bag so they don't scratch each other and if i'm not mistaken it's stiffer than the old you know it thickens it seems pretty beefy even without the reinforcement and i know with the reinforcement it became just rock solid. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. These are gonna slide over rocks. If you make plastic that's this stiff with this much nylon, it's just gonna perform really well. It's rounded too. It's back pretty heavy. Bearings, and they have a brass tube to go inside. Goes around the axle in the, in the sleeve. Uh, I think its main purpose is to add weight. You know, you lose some weight with plastic, but they add weight and they add a little bit of strength as well since they brace that plastic inside so the drive shafts are plastic so here are your links wow what size are these links they are massive massive and heavy and they're stainless steel uh, really cool i hate aluminum links and titanium links because they're light when really this is the opportunity for you to be as low as possible on your vehicle so big metal links is good and stainless steel is slides even better than plastic rumors are the shocks are oh they got shock oil that's cool okay so these are your springs pretty hard metal bodied shocks shock oil huh no number of course which is bad because you want to know if you are if you want to go lighter or heavier right but you don't know where you're going if you don't know where you came from boom thought of the day plastic. so the transmission transfer case are all plastic shouldn't be a problem um, metal pieces gears lots of bearings lots of big bearings uh, hardware and it looks like all the hardware is about the same size so we're gonna we're gonna put a castle copperhead system 2300 i believe we are gonna put a 66 kg agf rc 16.8 volts four cells i'm gonna have to run this four cell will this run four cell i can run three cell a uh, low profile servo from AGF, that's the way to go. I need another one of those, but for now, I'm gonna just use an, an old Traxxas one. Um, and then I use a Flysky uh, GT5 radio. Pros and cons, or at least likes and dislikes, you know, before I even, before I even assemble it and run it. So definitely the price, incredible, $500. Uh, especially considering that the the new axial Bronco is 570 it's an RTR but really it's a, 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 not at this level and then that new axial SCX6 
it's 1100 bucks for a big vehicle to have something the pedigree of a vanquish the engineering at 500 is incredible uh, the second pro is the vft vfd twin is really a marvel of engineering you know the fact that it is so low to uh, in the, on the chassis and uh, it has both units all integrated in optional whether you use them or not it's really and, and that that it, it's really amazing what they were able to pull off okay another plus is the body the body is super cool uh, it's a, it's patterned after a uh, it's no body clips swivel mount uh, no body clips is cool but when you put them in the bottom it just makes everything harder but to have a swivel mount and just a couple of clips on the bottom on the back is cool it's patterned after a Toyota FJ45, I believe, Land Cruiser. Very iconic vehicle. I believe designed by uh, Knight Customs, James Knight. And so you better believe he is already, he already ha has a lot of files, so you can add on to this vehicle that fit perfectly. You know, just like the, the Knight Runner that we just reviewed. Very cool that the, the, the servos that they use uh, for the dig and the uh, overdrive they don't require a lot of power. You're, you're, not, you're not winching it. You're not dependent on the servo to, to do these high torque maneuvers. So you can just use normal servos. Brass tube inserts is, is a good one. Um, very stealthy way. Uh, probably cost you 40, 50 bucks if you had to buy them separately. The steering angle, 49, 49 degrees. On the con side, one downside uh, with the Pro and, and this one too is only a 540 motor fits. Uh, 550 does not fit so that that's a, a definite downside because uh, you know you might have a 550 motor already either brushed or brushless plastic axles uh, it is a downside because it strays from the vanquish stronghold uh, their, their true fans they want their metal axles made in the usa everything so some people would consider that uh, a weakness and will prevent them from buying it but not me you know i love plastic i love the lower price point the tires, I think, is a downside, but I, I'll caveat that, uh, saying that I, I'll try them, I'll give them a shot. They weren't that good before, uh, and I'm not sure if they changed the formulation of the rubber. Final downside would be the, the weight. You know, with all these features, if you fully load this, you'll have how many servos? Three servos, three full-size servos, uh, all, the, all these metal gears and all that. It's gonna become quite a heavy vehicle, a little cage on, the, on your pickup bed, and weight, is sometimes a liability because it stresses your tires more. Meaning, um, you know, some of my guys have four pound rigs and, and they kill us. <laughs> so it's not gonna be a ultra high performance crawler uh, because uh, it, it's gonna be kinda, kinda meaty, kinda weighty. Um, so there you go. Um, you know, I love Traxxas, I love Axial, I love everything here. <laughs> And don't forget that I do appreciate Vanquish um, and I follow them through, this, through the steps. I have a lot of Vanquish parts and I'm super happy that they came up with some new level of engineering and brought it down to a price that's more approachable uh, for a lot of us, especially during these, these times of uh, low supply chain. All right. Thanks a ton.